Here in Australia, about 50 years ago, we used to have a very large manufacturing base. We don't anymore, but there are some companies that aim to bring that back. This battery startup in Australia says it will be mass producing low cost sodium batteries by next year. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Speaking of batteries, I'm, I'm going to install some batteries here at my home to back up my solar panels. So that's gonna be really, really exciting. We don't yet have access to Tesla Powerwalls or similar products like that with sodium ion cells. But many experts predict that will change drastically over the next five to 10 years as sodium ion batteries increase in energy density and the price goes down exponentially. Now, literally, I know that sounds crazy exponentially, but if you actually Google this or if you put this into some different artificial intelligence, chat GPT, all the different, all the different forms of AI that we have, it appears that AI is predicting on almost every level that sodium ion batteries will actually dominate the market within 10 years. If this were to happen, there would be a huge change. An ex-graphene battery maker in Queensland is pivoting. They're basically saying the same thing. They're saying, yep, the market is going to sodium. They say that they are just weeks away from starting sales on a sodium battery product, and they have a list of clients waiting for their battery cells. RenewEconomy.com.au reports that PowerCap says it will start producing its sodium batteries for commercial clients, many of which are in the United States, and for residential use early in 2025. So you may be able to get a sodium home battery within, within 12 months. They say the price will be 30% cheaper than lithium ion batteries. Now, if, if that is true, it would be the perfect solution. You don't need super high energy density batteries as energy storage. I mean, it doesn't matter if the box is bigger, does it? It really doesn't make much difference at home. If you're not trying to drive it around, the extra weight penalty doesn't matter. The company, a subsidiary of Zero Emissions Developments, is working on a solid state battery as well. It has the technology solved, it says, and is now looking for a manufacturer that can handle the challenges that come with making and dealing with a solid electrolyte. We've got the technology down. We've just got to get into larger scale manufacturing now. We're probably looking at around two years, said Chris Dryden, the general manager of product development and manufacturing. In the interim, the company's internal initial product is the sodium battery, a version that can plug into a PowerPoint, a regular home battery, and the commercial size, which starts at 50 kilowatt hours and can be as large as 130 kilowatt hours, but can be stacked to create something bigger. Now, they didn't say what size the home battery is going to be, but I estimate it'll be around 10 kilowatt hours. Dryden says they have one client in Italy, which is waiting on a 50 kilowatt hour installation. So why sodium instead of graphene? At the end of last year, PowerCap ditched the, or got rid of the graphene technology it was hoping to take to the ASX also in 2023. So it had been working on advanced graphene technology. And instead of just following through with that, as you know, many companies do, sunk cost bias, they realized they needed to pivot. The sodium technology was better than the graphene option and didn't include any lithium at all, which was a key consideration, said the company founder. We can charge up to 3C at the moment. If it's a 100 kilowatt battery, we can charge them at 300 kilowatt, so a 20 minute charge time. That's impressive. For energy density at the moment, our current sodium are compatible, but possibly slightly less than lithium. That's the trade-off with safety and longer life cycles. But the solid state battery will have more energy density. So it sounds like they're actually working on two different batteries or they have actually completed their sodium ion batteries, but they have a solid state sodium ion battery as well. Other non-lithium and local companies have tried to break into the battery market here in Australia and failed. With Flow Battery Pioneer Red Flow, actually going into, into administration, essentially going bankrupt earlier this year. Dryden expects PowerCap to compete today because in spite of making and assembling the battery modules in Queensland, they outsource the cell manufacturing. They can use the units more cheaply and claim to be safer given sodium is not is not really prone to thermal runaway. And it's true, sodium batteries are extremely safe. Even in freezing cold temperatures or extremely hot temperatures, it's actually one of the benefits of sodium batteries versus lithium ion batteries. 
There's a cost advantage, there's a safety advantage. The sodium batteries have an operational range of minus 40 degrees Celsius. That's about, 40, that's about minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit as well, and up to 80 degrees Celsius. And we are getting faster charge rates than lithium iron phosphate. And they have enough commercial clients, they say, to be investigating cell manufacturing plants in the US and India. The US because that's where the majority of their customers are. And India, to avoid future trade wars. There are no countries blocking batteries coming from India. But as you know, the US does have tariffs on Chinese made batteries. PowerCat wants in future to scrape its sodium from desalinated water rather than use mined sodium, a source it says is more environmentally friendly. Currently it has no desalination plants and must buy the sodium. The batteries also use black carbon gleaned from recycled plastic and old tires, and future factories are being set up to handle recycling of the company's own product. This is what they said. Part of setting up manufacturing facilities is making sure we can recycle them at the same time. We'll have a similar process to manufacturing, which will virtually do it backwards. We want to have 100% recyclable products, and the only way to ensure that is to take it on. It's easy enough to say we've got a 100% recyclable battery, but if no one can recycle them, then that isn't actually true. Now, Rachel Williamson writes for reneweconomy.com.au that this battery startup in Australia is going to be producing lower cost sodium batteries from 2025. If this is in fact true, then it could be a huge, a huge development for the company because not only are we talking about lower cost sodium batteries for home energy storage, which would be amazing, the market demand for those would be huge, especially if they're 30% cheaper than rivals and capable of handling many, many different you know, temperatures being safer than say, for example, a commonly used battery here in Australia, LG Energy Solutions, I believe 14,000 were recalled for fire problems and there was fire problems with them. That would solve all those issues. They're also, going to last longer. You gotta get more cycles from a product that actually is cheaper. But having a solid state sodium mine battery as well, well, honestly, this company could end up being a huge success. I wish them all the best. The biggest battery company in the world, CATL, Tesla's largest supplier, they've, re they've revealed this new hybrid battery and they've told us why this new sodium ion LFP battery is revolutionary, why it will completely change the experience for plug-in hybrid owners, but it's nothing to do with what the media are telling you. In fact, the media have just fabricated a bunch of garbage, which has got nothing to do with the actual story here. Cato must be reading these media stories and just laughing their heads off thinking, what are these people talking about? We didn't say any of that stuff. 